thought of visitors from another planet would give a lot of folks the willies. Yeah, one man says it's been happening and that the government, specifically NASA, knows about it. J.R. Barry has the story. It's a question man has been asking for centuries. Are we alone? And could there really be life out there somewhere? For some, the answer is easy. NASA, they say, knows that alien life exists and that we're being visited on a regular basis. Maybe the powers to be are setting us up for disclosure and make, making it more subtle so that it doesn't, isn't a big jolt to us. Clifford Cliff is the worldwide director of MUFON, the mutual UFO network. They have some 1,000 investigators. One of their latest investigations has to do with this video from January 28th of this year. A mysterious light is seen descending from the sky in Jerusalem. Multiple videos have surfaced of the supposed event. They all show the light hovering above the Dome of the Rock. After a few seconds, there appears to be some sort of energy burst. And then the light zooms away. So, is this proof positive that aliens exist, or is it nothing more than an elaborate hoax? MUFON believes NASA knows for sure. They do have a significant amount of information about the UFO phenomenon and ETs that they have not disclosed that are still there. Some of the astronauts have come forward now and are indicating that they have seen and, and witnessed things that uh, were beyond their explanation. Last October, during a satellite interview with NASA Director Charlie Bolden, I asked the former astronaut if he had ever seen anything in space. JR, I must admit, um, everybody that goes to space wants to see an alien. Uh, or wants to see some evidence that there is other life in our universe. Uh, and I'm no difference, but I, I am here to report that I saw no evidence. Uh, although deep in my heart, I, I believe that there is good potential for, for other life in our, in our universe. There is no doubt we are being visited. However, one of Bolden's colleagues says otherwise. Dr. Edgar Mitchell was the sixth man to walk on the moon. He came forward years ago claiming to have proof that alien life is out there. The universe that we live in is much more wondrous, exciting, complex, and far-reaching than we were ever able to know up to this point in time. And uh, the fact we have wondered, were we alone in the universe forever, only in our period do we really have evidence, no, we're not alone. So what's going on here? Why the different stories from two credible NASA sources? Last month, I had the chance to catch up with the NASA director again, this time in person, and I asked him about Ed Mitchell's stunning comments. Ed Mitchell is a big believer in, in extraterrestrials. And as you and I talked about before, I am one who, because of my faith, I believe that there is very likely other life somewhere else in the universe. I just don't have any evidence to back that up. Uh, but Edgar, Edgar is one who, contrary to, to my observations, uh, actually claims to have evidence that, that extraterrestrials exist. Well, even the Vatican is waiting. 12 VP 113, jokingly dubbed Biden, get it? Uh, Corey Powell's editor at large for Discover Magazine and Studio. How you doing, Corey? Uh, VP Biden. Right on. There we go. <laughs> Correct on that. Two images show you. This is the arrow, obviously pointing to it. But there are three dots on here. One is red. One is green. One is blue. Right. What's significant? So this is this is the actual discovery image. Basically, t two astronomers were looking one little patch of sky, very very far away, looking for exactly this kind of thing. Stars don't move. Planets or anything that's like a planet does. Mm -hmm. So this is color coded. This is what they saw on different nights. They're looking for one thing moving. They color coded it to, to show that all these stars are staying still. This thing is moving, and the way it's moving. So this is just one. It's one object, color coded. Is three, Pluto on nights. this? Pl Pluto's in a whole different part of the sky. So this is way out there. This is way out there. Why, this is more, is than, more than twice as far away as Pluto. Unbelievable. Why does this matter, Corey? Well, there are two ways you can look at it. I think you know, I look at it first of all as a as an exploration question. That there, you know, we know where we are on Earth. We've mapped our planet. Our solar system is still terra incognita. It's full of surprises. 
This object is something that astronomers said shouldn't even be there. There's a whole other solar system beyond the planets that we know that are full of these things that are sort of planets, sort of comets. Some of them they call dwarf planets. That's what they're calling this one. What we're seeing is we're seeing our neighborhood. We're seeing what's around us. And then the second part is we're seeing where we came from. Mm -hmm. Go back to the other image, you guys, and we'll show. Because we're over here on the left, right? <laughs> That's right. That, so we're, our... we're, we're over here. Okay. Pluto, Pluto. Pluto's out here. Yeah. And this thing called Maki Maki is way out here. That's right. That's, so that's another dwarf planet. If you want to find out where VP113 or Biden is located, uh, keep, keep walking about another 30 feet that wow. way. Wow. We can is, see that far. And this is the closest it gets to the sun. When it, when it really gets cooking, it's 15 times times as far away as Pluto. That's incredible. It takes uh, 4,300 years to go around the sun. Uh, I don't know how you know that, but I trust you. <laughs> what is a dwarf planet? So a dwarf planet, the, the, the fact that you hear weird terms like that is actually scientists saying there are things out there we don't really understand. It's, it's, a dwarf planet is kind of a catch-all term for something. It's, it's round like a planet. It sort of looks like a planet, but it doesn't orbit in a, in a regular way like all the, all the planets that we but knew would, growing up. Would this be part of our solar system? So it's part of our solar system. Or would system. it be outside? It, it's, a, it's, a whole, it's a whole new zone. It's called, it's called the, they're calling it the inner Oort cloud. You don't, really, really, you don't really need to know that. All you need to know is there really are these two solar systems. There's the solar system with the, with the classical planets, and then there's this whole other zone that we haven't explored. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying because of how this, this new dwarf planet moves, that there may actually be an even bigger planet, uh, something bigger than the Earth. Well, I guess that, that's the point I was going to, because you study this all the time. Is that why it's so significant? Because there's more beyond that? There's more beyond that, and then there's more beyond that. I mean, I think you know, what we're seeing is, Okay. You know, if you if you if you watch the the show Cosmos, I, I've been kind mm -hmm. of glued to that. And in the last episode, they were talking about the discovery of comets and the discovery of of you know our place in the solar system. We're still learning that. We're still yeah, learning this right are. now. And Thanks it's still. Coming, All right. Yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> just like you're out of space, <laughs> I'm out of time. But but this you know this is where we came from. This is why we're here. Oceans, continents, air. Thank you, us. Corey. It's all part of that. You got it, man. Good to have you back. back. Ingenuity huge amounts of computing power, and then hours and hours, months of discussions with colleagues and poring over the data to validate the results. Thank you. I, I realize you're focusing on near-Earth asteroids today, but uh, there's been so much talk about the potential for finding a planet X or some sort of large body uh, through the WISE survey. Can you comment on any, uh, any status on, on that sort of search or, or maybe even reassure people that planet X isn't coming to get them next year? Uh, yes, this is Amy Meinzer. I'm happy to answer this one. There, uh, planet X is not coming to get us. Um, so, but we are looking to see if there are any other bodies in the outer part of the solar system with the WISE data. This is a very natural project for WISE. And so we're still working on it right now. Uh, it's, we've obviously just returned a huge amount of data from the telescope. It's going to take us a long time to sort through. Uh, but the initial results are very promising. You may have seen earlier results where we've discovered a new class of very cool type of stars with WISE. Uh, but the search is still on, and uh, we don't think that there's anything that's hazardous in the outer solar system. We think that this is a, just a sort of a, if there is something out there, it would be a large body in a roughly circular orbit. Our next caller, Denise Chow from Space.com. So when you say the initial results are very promising, yeah, uh, the, the initial results are very promising. Anything else you wanted to say on that point? We've actually been able to confirm the discovery of 100 new uh, objects that are these very cool stars called brown dwarfs. And so uh, that's very similar to what uh, people are interested in looking for. So we've actually found some of these that are relatively close to the Earth, but none of these are closer at this point than the nearest star to our solar system. So it's a good start, though. Pluto, the sometimes planet planet, may be hiding a pretty huge secret. Well, two huge secrets, actually. Astronomers in Spain believe that hiding behind Pluto, obscured from our view, are two additional giant planets. Spanish scientists in Madrid discovered the potential for the two massive celestial bodies at the outer reach, reaches of our solar system after studying strange patterns in the orbit of rocky objects around Pluto, including the newly discovered dwarf planet 2012 VP113. Scientists believe the first hidden wor world would be about 10 times the mass 
of Earth. They believe that this planet is moving in resonance with a bigger planet that is somewhere between Mars and Jupiter in size and would orbit 200 times the Earth's distance from the Sun. But can we ever conclusively confirm the existence of these two planets? Well, Scott Shepard at the Carnegie Institution for Science had this to say. As there are only a few of these extremely distant objects known, it's hard to say anything definitive about the number or location of any distant planets. However, in the near future, we should have more objects to work with to help us determine the structure of the outer solar system. So there you have it. Time will tell. And now men want to ask me why I'm not into the playoffs this weekend. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so busy covering the incredible hardcore news that I haven't even gotten into the ninth planet that was discovered that they announced last week. And, of course, they discovered it a long time ago. They just got around to telling us. And there's a reason they didn't get around to telling us about it. I am someone who always got sick and tired of hearing about Planet X. Because as long as I've been on the air, people are saying, it's coming next year, it's coming in three years, it's going to happen. The ancients said it comes through every 20,000 years in a different type of orbit that doesn't go in circles around the sun, but goes way out past the Kuiper belt and comes in basically in a, at an elliptical. And then I started reading deeper into this planet, and it, there it was, a 20,000-year deformed orbit going out into deep space, 10 times the size of the Earth. It is Planet X, folks. Isn't that just perfect that this would just show up while all this circus is going on? Now, now I want to be clear about this. It fits the bill of Planet X. They're probably... 50, 60, 100, 1,000, I don't know, Planet X's. They've already chronicled hundreds and hundreds of planetoids bigger than Pluto in the Kuiper Belt out past the former ninth planet, named after the god of the underworld, a fitting name, the Roman god of hell. So they said no more ninth planet because we got to say we have hundreds of planets if there's things bigger than it. Well, Pluto's little. This sucker is gigantor. Compared to Pluto. They're in the news today, meteorologists talking about how the moon being full during the blizzard is going to make it worse, and it, and it does. It affects space winds, winds of space, the sun, and a lot more. Why the full moon could make this weekend's blizzard more destructive. Who knows what this planet is going to do coming closer in to the solar system. Because here's the deal, it's been way out there for however long, and now they've tracked its course and think it's every 20,000 years, right out of what the ancient Babylonians and the Mayans and all these other cultures said this big planet comes through and that there's earthquakes and volcanoes and all hell breaks loose, and it comes through every 20,000 years, and then now here it comes. Now, I don't know if this is the one, because there's so many of them out there. Who knows what's out there? We're too busy looking at Hillary Clinton and going, I'm voting for her because she's a woman. Who cares? What I'm getting at is we don't have time for racism and sexism and all this fighting and all this garbage and all this divide and conquer when we have genetic engineering going on, splicing and mutating every species on the planet like something out of H.G. Wells, the island of Dr. Maru, squared planet x they discovered it 10 times bigger than earth the size of neptune a gas giant with a 20,000 year orbit exactly what a bunch of the ancients said they said it when it comes back through it causes massive catastrophes volcanoes you name it by the way it gave me a whole stack of articles about record volcanoes i laid it somewhere i think in there by the coffee pot 
Uh, but uh, I'm going to have to actually get to that. Halfway into the hour with Michael Schneider from the Economic Collapse blog and get his take on it. And, and, and here's the deal, folks. I, I don't want to say I'm eating my hat on this, but I've been very, very critical of the perennial books that have been coming out since the mid-90s about Planet X is coming. It's a gas giant, 20,000-year elliptical orbit. You know, the uh, Babylonians talked about it, the Zoroasters, the Mayans. I never said that I didn't think that there aren't a whole bunch of planets out there. They've proven there's hundreds of them that are out in the Kuiper Belt past Pluto. That's why they delisted it, as I said earlier. What I was getting at is constantly saying it's coming next year and constantly saying it's the end of the world and the movie 2012, and then I get blamed for it. They would, I mean, there's so many news articles going, Alex Jones is the one said we didn't go to the moon and that aliens run everything and that the Himalayas are going to be, you know, at sea level. Uh, well, hey, Alex, 2012 didn't kill everybody. And so it just gets old. But it does show how the ancients were certainly right about big planets that come through, and there are big disasters, and there are big asteroids that hit the Earth, and there are big Earth changes, and the elite shouldn't be the focus of everything. They're all busy. I saw another headline last week going, Alex Jones says the elite want off-world colonies to escape Earth. I was quoting top elitist on their way to Davos saying that was going to be up for discussion. It was mainstream news. So even when there's mainstream news that, you know, Thiel and all these other folks and, and, and you know, the uh, Tesla owner and all the rest of it are saying we need a Mars colony for the elite, I cover what they say, and then they go, Alex is crazy and made this up. So see, that's how they operate. They think you're stupid. But I tell you, uncanny that the ancients said 20,000 years, bigger than the Earth, and all the rest of it, and here it is. Um, the question is, we're trying to look at its orbit. I mean, is it even scheduled? I guess it's coming in closer. That's what they're saying. That's how they're able to, to see it now. It's coming in from this orbit. What is it? They're saying many, many, many times further out from Pluto. You're one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet, colloidal silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Rabbis for centuries, for centuries, not recently, ladies and gentlemen, for centuries have had teachings where they have spotted comets and they've noticed what has happened a few years later. They've spotted a comet and they've noted what's happened years later. And they always will tell you the appearance of a comet means trouble for the world.
I know there's not a parent in America who doesn't feel the same overwhelming grief that I do. The majority of those who died today were children, uh, beautiful little kids between the ages of five and ten years old. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. Among the fallen were also teachers, men and women who devoted their lives to helping our children fulfill their dreams.